I'm Dave Thomas and today I'm building the Game Over rocket kit from Custom Rockets. Now I'm going to be doing this in front of a rocketry class and so the tone of this video is going to be a little bit different than most of my first person videos here. As usual let's go ahead and check and make sure we have all the parts here. So we've got our body tube um, a motor thrust ring or engine block, All right. two centering rings, motor mount tube, launch lug, the nose cone comes in two pieces, so make sure you have both of those, fin stock, shock cord, streamer, and then self-stick decals, and then finally the engine clip. So I've got everything here and I'm going to clear this away now and we will start our build. Okay so the first part here in the front where we make sure we have all the pieces we just did that so you don't have to worry about that part. Alright so turn this over to step one and find the um, rocket motor tube here. It's going to be the small tube. It's got a slot in one end of it. Okay, and the first thing I want you to do is on the other end, the end, the end that doesn't have the pre-cut slot, just write aft, A-F-T, means rear or back. Okay, once you've got that, go ahead and take your ruler, and unfortunately this is all in imperial units, so we're stuck with it. All right. So make a little tick mark here, half an inch from each end. Just draw a little mark there. Um, and keep it away from the side with the uh, cut slot in it. Both ends. So you need to mark it half an inch from both ends there. Okay, now take your engine clip here, all right, and you want the end that just has the single 90 degree bend in it. That's going to pop into that slot. So that's going to go in like that. All right, now we're not going to add any glue yet, but go ahead and take one of the centering rings here. All right, so that's going to go over the, t the uh, forward end and slide that all the way down to the mark that you made on the aft end of the tube. Okay. And then do the same thing with the other centering ring. All right, you're going to put that on so that your top mark is on the outside of the ring there. So you should have two rings um, just inside the mark on each. Okay. And then your thrust ring or engine block here, this is going to fit in the front of the engine mount. So you can just slide that in for now. And that will be just not quite flush with the top, so it'll stick over the top just a little bit. And it should be resting on the top of the engine hook there. Okay, have we got that? Alright, go ahead and pull that back out now that we know it all fits. Okay, so now take your glue, all right, and what I'm going to do on the forward ring, I'm going to pull it back so that now I've got about a ring's length of space between the ring and the mark there. And I just run a thin bead of glue all the way around it. Yeah, you can just go right over the metal, it won't hurt it. Okay. So it looks like that. You don't want a huge amount, just enough to go all the way around. And then go ahead and push the ring through the glue and back to your mark there. Okay, and then with, um, that should push the glue ahead. And then just take your finger and just smooth that glue in all the way around. Okay. 
make sure there's no glue on the top surface here of the ring. Okay, for the bottom ring, you're going to do the same thing. So pull it toward the inside as well. So that again, you've got about a ring's length of space there. And do the same thing. Just run a small bead of glue there. All right, and in this case, try and keep the glue off the, the metal piece. It's not the end of the world if you don't. All right, but once more, slide that into place and smooth that glue around. All right, and then try, if you got any on the metal piece there, try and take that off as much as you can. Okay, for your thrust ring, um, this, again, this is going to go inside here. What I want you to do, um, everybody should have had a bunch of what look like long Q-tips, right? All right, so take one of those, and what I want you to do is just put a little bit of glue on these. You don't want it dripping off, but go ahead and just put some all the way around it like that. Okay, and then I want you to put this right just inside the edge, not down inside the tube, but right inside the edge of the front part of the motor mount. Because we don't want to force a bunch of glue down into the tube. All right, so once you get that glue in, take your um, thrust ring again, get it put right inside, and then just turn the whole thing over and gently push it down. And that'll put it into place. Okay, and then we're just going to set this aside and let that glue fully dry. doesn't matter which end, which one, every one you write on becomes the aft end. Okay, um, so down here at step two, what you do here is you put your body tube inside that circle, all right, and where it shows a little vertical line there, you're going to put that on your tube. So just make a little tick mark there, go all the way around. So you should have three equally spaced tick marks around the base of that aft end. Okay, and then between any two of them, doesn't matter which two, okay, but you can just estimate halfway in between and put one more tick there and mark this with an LL. That's going to stand for launch lug. But for some reason, these, the custom rocketry kits, they, they always have you kind of eyeball the launch lug later instead of giving you a place to put it in. Okay, now this next part, we're going to do over at the door frames. Now I'm going to show you what, what happens. This is basically a portable door frame here. Okay, so for each of your little tick marks there, for the fins, All right, you're going to put this up against the door frame, okay? And what you're going to do is draw a line about a third of the way up the body tube. You'll do that for each of the fin lines. For that launch lug line, which there's mine there, this should go halfway up the rocket. Okay? Now let's go over to this door and I'll show you how to do this without the portable line drawing thing. Okay, so if we take one of the fins here and we're just going to put this against one of those lines. So when we assemble this, the fin's going to go on like this. Okay, actually it's going to go up about like that, about a half inch there from the base. Alright, so what I want you to do is take your sandpaper and just gently sand along that line a few times over what will be the length of the root tip. Okay, now it's not a big deal if you don't get it exact, 
Um, and don't do it a lot. You don't want to erase your lines there. Uh, what this does is it takes off the glossiness of the wrap on the cardboard, and this will make it easier for the glue to adhere. For the launch lug line, what you need to do is measure three inches from the bottom. All right, and just put a little tick mark on the launch lug line at that point. Okay, and then that's where the, the aft end of your launch lug is going to go. So it's going to go about there. And so go ahead and then roughen that three inches from the aft end. All right. And so you can roughen in about the size of a launch lug there. Okay, I gave everybody a sanding block here. So this block of wood, um, this is meant for sanding. Pay attention here, guys. All right, take your longer piece of sandpaper here, put that down, and put the sanding block across its width, like that. And then you just fold the sanding paper up around it. And that gives you a nice hard, flat surface here. And so, once you've got your body tube sanded where it needs to be, take each of your fins, and using the sanding block, just give it a few strokes here. To sand down the faces of the fins. Yep, do both sides and do this for each fin. Once you have the faces all sanded, then you can just put your a piece of sandpaper here down flat on your work surface. And on each of the edges, just give it a couple of strokes to remove that dark material. It's just soot from the laser cutter. Right, keep your fin perpendicular, so you don't want to make that surface slanted, at least not yet. edge here and then do the opposite edge and then you just start rounding it over and again you don't just do this enough that you get a rounded cross section if you do it too much you just wear away the fin Yep, each fin only on the leading edge. Alright, so once you get that done, go ahead and line up your fins here, and they should look more or less the same. All right, it's not going to be perfect. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to take the motor mount here, and first we're just going to dry fit this in. So this will go up the aft end. Just insert that in there. And, and you want your engine clip here to line up with your launch lug line. Okay, so now when this goes in all the way, it should be flush with the end of the rocket tube there. So glue? All right, so what we're going to do is align this, okay, where our glue is going 
to go is right below where this ring will be. All right, so you're going to need another one of your long Q-tips here. All right, so to measure this, guys, look what I'm doing. All right, put the end of your Q-tip right below the forward ring, and then put your thumbnail on the, the stick where the end of your motor mount is. is. Okay, now put some glue on there. On the Q-tip, <laughs> On the Q-tip, not on your thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, All right. yeah here you, you want to pretty much cover the Q-tip. All right, now what you're going to do, and this is the, the tricky part, don't let this touch any edges to begin with. Stick it straight up the tube until you hit your thumbnail. All right, and now bring your thumb up so it hits the inside of the tube and go all the way around. Okay. Now, quickly, take your motor mount, slide it in. Now, before you go about halfway, so I'm about halfway in here, make sure, again, that you're lined up with your engine clip and your launch lug line. All right, and then push the whole thing in very quickly. Now, just let it set aside here and let that dry once more. If it doesn't hold, we can come back and fix it. Okay, so what you're going to do now, this is a polyurethane-based sanding sealer that you've got in front of you. Go ahead and open that up carefully. Okay, you're going to need another one of the big applicators here. All right, and what I want you to do is take the neat, the uh, pins here, okay. and you're going to poke it into the root edge of your fin. All right, it does not need to go in very far. All right. all right, and it only needs to go in a few millimeters. Don't try and shove it all the way in, and be careful that you don't. You also need to make sure it's straight so it doesn't come out one side or the other. All right, do that to all of them. All right, take your applicator, put some of the sanding sealer on it, and just paint it across the wood. Okay, now, put this all around the fin except on the root edge. What this is doing is it fills in the grain of the wood and then it will harden. And so, then we'll take it uh, tomorrow and re-sand it, and it'll give us a nice smooth finish. Um, and it also gets, if, if you notice right now, you got little fuzzy things on there from where you sanded. Um, when we re-sand this, that'll get rid of that. Okay, once you've got the whole fin coated, guys, pay attention. You can put this into one of the little holes in the corrugated cardboard there. Okay, and just let it dry that way. And just go ahead and do that for all the fins. So just go through and with the fine sandpaper, just lightly sand that. All right, and check it frequently. So again, you don't want to go down way into the wood again. Just smooth the surface. And you may have to redo um, your edges just a little bit. All right, and just make sure you don't flatten out the rounded edge of the leading edge.
once you've got them all sanded, then take one of the wipes here and just wipe off any excess dust. Okay, so let's get your body tube here and a ruler. Okay, now on your fin lines, make a mark at three-eighths of an inch. Yeah, I know it's not metric. Uh, three-eighths of an inch from the uh, aft end of the tube. And just do that on each of your fin lines. Critical thing here, don't use too much glue. Beginners like to, to think, well, you know, if a little glue is good, a lot of glue is better. Um, in this case, it's not. Okay, so get one of your fins here. And what we're going to do is just add a very small amount of glue here. Mine's kind of lumpy there. And just take your finger and smooth that into a nice, even, thin film of glue. Okay, now make sure you have your leading edge facing forward. Alright, and what you're going to do then is the trailing edge, the very corner of the fin, that's going to go at the mark you just made. Right, and just go ahead and touch this down onto the line and then pull it back off again. And now you're going to wait 60 seconds. And what's happening during this time is the glue is getting tacky. And so once it's become a little bit tacky, we can stick it back together and that will keep it from flopping over as easily. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. And then what I'm going to do is sight down the rocket here and make sure that the fin is lined up with the rocket and also that it's perpendicular to the body tube. So it should stick straight up. Yep. Okay, and now we start the weight. All right, so once you got your fin on there, just prop it up between whatever you got handy. All right, so as long as your fin is stable, then you can go ahead and add the next one in the same process. So go ahead and put a little film of glue on there. All right, make sure you don't attach it to your launch lug line. I just had to check mine. I thought maybe I'd made a mistake. Oh, I'm, I make a mistake at least 10 times a day. All right, and so once more, just stick it on there, pull it off, let it dry a bit. All right, and after the 30, 30 to 60 seconds there, go ahead and put that on just like you did the other one. Okay, and then once more, make sure that it's lined up straight. And perpendicular. Now, on this case, since now we've got the other fin in our way, um, when you go to let this dry, kind of hang it off the edge of your table so that that fin does not get in the way. Okay, so once again, check your fin. Um, as long as it's not coming loose with a little touch there, you're good. Okay, and now you're going to put that third fin on the same way. And one, 
once more, touching it to the line, let it dry for 60 seconds, and stick it back on. Alright, now go ahead and stick that back on. All right, and then once more, go ahead and let that dry. All right, everybody find your launch lugs? Yes. Okay, this is going to go on much like we did the fins. So just put a thin film of glue along the length here. All right, and now find your launch lug line. And remember, we made that mark three inches up. So that's where the aft end of your launch lug goes. All right, go ahead and line that up. And just like before, once you've got it there, pull it off. And we'll let that dry for about 60 seconds. All right, once you've got that tacky again, go ahead and put this back on. All right, and then sight down it. Make sure it's in line with the line that you drew. Okay, and then if they're light enough that you can just stand your rocket up like this and let it dry. Okay, so take your fin, take some glue, and you're just going to do this. Okay. Yep, so just, I would do like two faces at once here, and then take your finger and smooth that in. And then you go on to the next two. And keep your rocket horizontal, otherwise the glue can run to one end to the other and you end up with really funky looking fillets. Yep. Do it to all of your root edges. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a loose fin there. And these do two things. One is they strengthen your fin mount. Um, they also help improve the aerodynamics of your rocket. They reduce something called interference drag that we're going to talk about next week. All right, and once you've got the fins done, then do the same thing for your launch lug. Now be careful, that launch lug might be a little loose yet. So do this gently. But I want to get this done today so that your rockets can be drying all weekend and we'll be ready to decorate them. Oh, so that'll basically be almost yeah, we just need to install the recovery system, and that takes all about 10 minutes. All right, so go ahead and pull out the elastic here. And then on the front of your instruction sheet, Cut out where it says shock cord mount here.
is over a safe surface like the poster boards. I'm going to put this down and we're going to put glue all the way down it. Okay, and then just go ahead and smear that so that it covers the whole thing. Okay, once you've got that glue all over, you're going to take the end of the shock cord here and starting at the line between the 1 and the 2, run it diagonally across the shock cord mount. All right, by running it diagonally like this, when we fold it up on itself, it won't be as thick. So then you're going to simply take the 1 Fold that over onto the two. And squish it down. Get all the air bubbles out of there. And then do the same thing. Take the two. And fold it up onto the three. All right. And the shock cord then should lay beside itself rather than on top of itself for the most part. Okay. And then go ahead and Squish all the air out again. You want nice, good contact between all sides. And I want you to bend it into a curve like this. All right, so in cross section, it's got a, a convex shape to it. All right, over there. Okay, now go ahead and apply some more glue to the surface here. I don't get too much here, but you do still want enough that it makes a film all the way across the entire shock cord mount. All right, now here's the tricky part. This needs to go down at least an inch and a half into the rocket body tube so that it doesn't interfere with the nose cone. And what I prefer is just to get it down there as far as you possibly can. So if you've got long, skinny fingers, take advantage of them. Okay, so push that down and then hold the rocket in the palm of your hand and then press that up against the inside of the body tube and against your hand. So the shock cord mount should be against your hand here. And then just press that down good and hard. Again, get all the air out of it. So you can see that down there. Okay. Once you get it in, just look down the tube then. Make sure there's nothing sticking up. You want that as flat as you can make it. Okay, well you can just kind of set that aside, but leave the shock cord exposed here. All right, now you're going to need your streamer. Okay, right, take the little piece of transparent tape there. All right, and you're going to put the streamer halfway into it. I can't see what you're doing. Yeah, I know. Hang on. Let me, I'll lift it off the surface. <laughs> it's very transparent tape. Oh, okay. Oh. Right. Side. Yeah, so this is the sticky side, and you're just going to put the streamer halfway up the width. Okay. And now take your shock cord and find about a third of the way from the free end. Right, and you're going to lay this down across the top of your streamer there. 
and then fold the rest of that tape over onto the shock cord. Yeah, third of the way from the free end, roughly. Okay, so now it should look like that. Okay, and then use your hobby knife, carefully cut away the extra tape here on the corners. Don't cut your streamer or your shock cord. So you have your nose cone body and then the, the base piece here. All right, you're going to take your plastic cement. All right, run a bead of the cement just inside the lip. What are you doing? I thought the nose cone. This is supposed to be like an like Just wipe, if, if, if it's pressurized, just wipe it off with a tissue. Okay, you don't want too much in here, just enough to give a coating all the way around, and then take the base piece here, put it on, and just give it a twist back and forth a little bit, and that'll help seat it into the cement. All right, so once we've got that on, just let it dry for a few minutes, and let's talk about finishing touches here. So this is showing the, the rocket's suggested finish. You don't have to use it. No. <clears throat> okay. Now, one of the things I really like about the custom rockets is their nose cones are really, really smooth. You don't have to do anything to them if you want their color. Now, if you want to go with the recommended paint scheme, you'll need to color this black. All right. Or if you're going to, if you're going to paint the nose cone anything besides what it is, what you're going to want to do is take that 320 grit sandpaper, okay, and just lightly sand all the way around this. And the reason for that is the acrylic paints are not going to stick to that glossy finish very well. So you need to just do a little bit of roughing it up, and then the paint will adhere better. Personally, I'm going to leave mine white. You guys can do what you want. All right. Something else to think about here, um, the self-adhesive decals, this is all one sheet, so these are meant to be cut out when you're ready to use them. Okay. Now, you don't want to even mess with these things until after the paint has dried. So after you've painted these things, they need to dry overnight and then put the decals on. All right. So at this point, go ahead and pull out your paints. Uh, make sure you're working over a, a surface like your poster board. The last structural thing to do is to tie the shock cord onto the nose cone. You just need to tie a couple of half hitches here or a double knot. Okay, and you can do this either before or after you do whatever painting you want to do. Uh, if you're going to paint the nose cone a different color than the rest of the rocket, then I would do this after you do your painting. And then once you've got that up, done, just put a little dot of glue on the knot and just work that down inside. Okay, and then let that dry, and that will keep that from unraveling. And then if you've got excess material here on the free end, go ahead and cut that off but leave about a quarter inch or about five millimeters there um, so that it doesn't get pulled back through the knot. So you can just do this with scissors. I'm going to use my hobby knife here. Okay, and you want it short enough that it's not going to be likely to catch between the shoulder and the body tube when you go to launch. You can even take this and kind of tuck it up into the nose cone if you like. Okay, and that's it. So I hope you have a great flight and a safe recovery and please stay tuned for more of my videos.